Well, hey, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our night of worship and prayer. Uh, we are so glad that uh, you are joining us, whether you're here in the room, uh, still getting seated, uh, or whether you are at home in your living room and joining us. Uh, we're uh, really glad to be able to do this tonight. Uh, my name is Corey. I'm the worship pastor here, and, uh, and so we're going to spend some time uh, worshiping the Lord together, uh, crying out to him in our prayers, uh, and, uh, and also uh, being together in whatever capacity we're able to. So I uh, hope that you'll join us as we, uh, as we begin our time here together. Uh, let's sing uh, the song of invitation to the Holy Spirit. Nothing worth more will ever come close. Nothing can compare for our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of love, when my heart becomes free, and my chain is undone. In your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come, flood this. Your prayer. 
Father, we, we want your presence uh, here with us this evening. We know that you've promised uh, to be with us. And so we're thankful. We're thankful that you're here. And Lord, we think of um, that moment uh, when Solomon dedicated the temple. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, the singers raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, He is good, His love endures forever. He is good, His love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. The glory of the Lord filled the temple of God, and we, your people here tonight, your temple, your, a bunch of living stones that have come together to, to be your temple, we're so grateful that you've chosen to dwell in us, your people, and, and would you fill this place? We, we say, you are good and your love endures forever. Together as a people, we, we want to say that tonight in everything we're doing. We say you are good. We declare you're good, even if we don't feel like it. Even if we don't feel those things to be true, Lord, we just want to, we, we want to say and speak truth. Lord, you are good and your love endures forever. And come and fill us with your glory, with your presence. We're so grateful so grateful that you've called us your children that we're part of your family adopted into your family and so we just we anchor our lives upon you tonight god I, we, we would ask that in in the next number of minutes as we worship and as we gather in these groups to pray lord that you would hear our prayer and that we would experience the beauty of your love shared with each other as we lift up our voices to you. We love you. Amen. All right. Amen. Well, welcome uh, to all of you. I want to welcome two groups of people. So all of you who are here uh, live and in the room, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for coming and participating and praying. This is awesome. And for all of you who are joining on Zoom, I know there's a a great group of you on Zoom who are uh, going to be kind of put into breakout rooms a little bit later uh, to pray together. And so that's amazing. Thank you. You are just as much a part of what we're doing here. And so we're kind of two groups here tonight, uh, which is wonderful. Just a real, just a housekeeping thing. If you are just live streaming this right now, so maybe you went on YouTube or something and you're live streaming it, and you'd actually like to pray with some people and, and actually participate in a, in a group uh, praying, for some of the things that are happening tonight, I would encourage you right now, you just go on nlcc.ca and you can click to join uh, the Zoom uh, crew. Uh, that's not the right language, but just join Zoom. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people on Zoom. And so feel free to do that if you would like to. As I just mentioned, tonight we want to encounter God. And I would love for us tonight to make uh, Exodus 3, it's a, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, it's a, it's, a, um, it's a text that I've just been just uh, meditating on, spending a lot of time in. Exodus 3, if you brought your Bible, you can open it up to Exodus 3. We're actually going to work through um, uh, some of the first few verses of Exodus 3 tonight, and we want to encounter the living God uh, through his word. And so I want to begin uh, with verses 1 and 2, Exodus 3. Verses 1 and 2. This is a story about Moses. You might be uh, fairly new to Christianity. This is a, this is a story about Moses. Uh, he's a shepherd at this point. Um, he hasn't done some of the famous things that he's known for yet. He hasn't yet been called by God. But this is the moment he gets called by God where he encounters God. It's near the beginning of his story. So Exodus 3, 
verses 1 to 2. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Here Moses is encountering the living God at the bush. And God says, take off your sandals, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Holy. It, it, it just means set apart. Uh, this space that God had created to encounter Moses, it was a sacred space. It was a set apart space. It was a holy space. And I believe that God sets aside tonight as a holy place to encounter him. And what does God do? God calls Moses by name. He calls him by name. He's calling you by name tonight. On this holy ground, he calls you by name. So what I think we need to do as we begin here tonight is to spend a moment of quiet before the Lord, just to acknowledge that he's here. Just say, maybe if you might be new to a night of prayer, you just say, here I am. Lord, maybe you want to say, I'm listening. And for some of you, um, you're all welcome to participate in this, but no matter where you are in your journey with Jesus, it's, it's an opportunity to make things right before the Lord. This is holy ground, and you can come and you can say, Lord, I'm sorry for some things that are going on in my heart. This is an opportunity to confess to God some, some of the junk, some of the sin in your life. But what we're doing is just we're going to be quiet, totally quiet, for about a minute or two. And this is an opportunity for you to stand before God, stand before the bush, the burning bush. Hear him call you by name, confess our sin, and let him know that you're listening. All right, let's spend that moment of quiet together.
Lord, we're listening. Open our ears. We want to hear you. We want this encounter with you. Lord, we know as we approach you, you're the one who sets fire to a bush, but the bush doesn't burn up. And how, how it is that we can enter your presence um, and still be able to speak uh, is a mystery. But Lord, we thank you. We're thankful for, for your glory and for your goodness in our lives. And we're so grateful you're here tonight. Amen. As we approach our first time where we're going to pray together in our groups, let's keep reading the text. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. To bring some of you up to speed, if you don't know the story very well, for 400 years, God's people were in slavery in Egypt. And Moses had run away. He had run away from, from Egypt. But the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down. Those of you who know the work and ministry of Jesus, look at that little phrase. So I have come down. That's what God does. God comes down to rescue to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I just want you to listen to God for a minute. I've indeed seen the misery He's seen the misery. I don't know what you're walking through, but he sees it. He sees it. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. Some of you are experiencing some kind of slavery. Something has caught you. I'm concerned about their suffering. God cares. God has a heart cares about his people. I'm concerned about their suffering. I have come down to rescue them. God gets involved. God moves in. And I'm sending you to Pharaoh. That's the part where we get a bit squeamish. We like the part where he notices us and loves us, but the part when I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt, that God would use you, that God would use us. So we have to, we have to pray. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin the night by praying to see people set free. To see God move into the misery and the suffering in people's lives. And we want to see God break chains and set people free. We want to see God heal. Because we believe the gospel that Jesus has come down to rescue. And we're his hands and feet. And we want to to be a church on our knees praying for God to move. He sees. He knows. He cares. And he's come down to move. And so what I'd love to do is to pray. And so I'll just show you the slide. The first slide that's going to come up for our prayer time will be prayer for healing and hope during the pandemic. Now, I just mentioned a few things. Notice that top line there, prayer for healing and hope during the pandemic. So I put there, pray for frontline workers by name, pray for the sick. If you know someone, pray for them, pray for a cure, pray that we would be faithful to love those around us. We're the ones called on mission. Um, But there's other things that I was thinking of later today. I mean, their mental health, those who are struggling with mental health um, issues, those struggling with addiction issues. Like, now's our time to gather as a church to pray for these things. Also, every night of prayer, we want to pray for two of our missionaries. Last month, we prayed for a couple of our missionaries. This month, uh, we're going alphabetical. So here's uh, the Brinks and the Favros and the great work that they're doing. So Uh, What we'll do is we'll move into about 10 minutes of praying together in some small groups. And so if you're on Zoom, feel free to go to breakout rooms right now and uh, pray. Now, if you are here in the room, you are here in the room. Everyone in Zoom just left. Uh, The rest of us, uh, could you just turn to groups of three or four? Can you just turn and uh, we want to pray safely. So um, you can feel free to pray with a mask on or whatever. But just turn around groups of three or four. Um, Don't be shy. Just start to move. You may not know them. And uh, just introduce yourself to to whoever is around you, and we'll gather in groups of three or four. Five's okay, but uh, at least three. (laughs) 
All right. Well, after you introduce yourself to each other, share your name, just feel free to dive into prayer and uh, to lifting up these needs before the Lord.
here, working in this place. We worship you. We worship you. You are here. stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Keep 
seated. Those of you on Zoom, you can do whatever you want. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to practice meditating on the scriptures, uh, leading us into a time of prayer ministry um, as our last portion of the night. But uh, what, what we want to do is to, is to as some of you know, we're, we're in our series in scripture, and we, we want to allow tonight for, for the encounter with God to happen through the word and through his scriptures. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to read through Exodus 3. And I'll read through a smaller section, just uh, verses 4 to 12. And here's what we're going to do. If you would just sit back, and maybe you've never done something like this before, but just sit back and we're going to say, Lord, would you come? Come and move among us. And would you speak? And I'll read through the text once. And then if you have your Bible, you can just Keep your Bible open and just read the text. Maybe some of you look it up on a, on a Bible app or something like that. But what, what, what you can do is just sit back and say, Lord, speak to me. And as we go through it, just watch for things that are jumping out at you. Look at a little phrase, or maybe there's, there's a couple words or something like that. There's an image in the scripture that you're like, whoa, what is that? Or that hits me. You know, something that God said there means something to me tonight. And so we're, and then we're going to listen. We'll spend some time um, prayerfully listening, and then I'll just, I'll just walk us through it. So if you, if you remember from a couple weeks ago, what we're going to do is we're going to read, ruminate, respond, and rest. So we'll do that together here. So let's begin with some prayer. So Lord, once again, we've already prayed this a few times tonight, but we really do want to encounter you. You are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. And would you shine the light of your truth into our hearts as we meditate on Exodus 3. Thank you, Lord. So, Exodus 3, verses 4 to 12. Sit back and listen. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him, that's Moses, from within the bush. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Then he said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now the cry of the Israelites, verse 9, has reached me. And I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. I will be with you. What we're going to do is just allow you to ruminate. So would you just read through it again? The text will come back up on the screen and just slowly read through it. 
we'll just see what God says. All right. some of you begin to catch a word or a phrase or see an image there, just prayerfully ask God, why did you want me to hear those words tonight? Why, God? Why did you want me to hear those words tonight? Spend a couple minutes just prayerfully listening. Those of you who feel like something jumped off the page for you, just would you thank God? Just in prayer, just thank him. Say thank you. For some of you, you don't yet know what it means, right? But just say thank you. Thank you, God. For some of you who feel like God is speaking, say thank you for that. rest in God's goodness would you just sit back close your eyes and just say God I receive your love anew we're going to sing a song and uh, right now, and I just want to encourage you. Um, this takes a lot of practice just to listen to God's voice. If you felt like tonight, if you're kind of going, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I didn't get a word or nothing clicked for me, it's okay. This is this is a practice that we continue to do. Um, but just enter in and just thank God and just continue to, maybe even as we sing this song, just say, Lord, continue to speak to me. Just speak to me. I want to learn how to hear your voice. And uh, I know he's delighted to answer that kind of prayer. And so let's stand together. Let's, uh, let's worship the Lord.
So come Holy Spirit and come move among us as we love one another, as we pray for each other. Would you move in a powerful way here tonight? Again, we want to see your glory as you move among us. And we pray for encouragement tonight. We pray for strength tonight for people. We pray for hope tonight for people. Move among us. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, spend our third and final section tonight praying for each other. So would you go ahead and, and, uh, and gather in your groups again, and you can sit together. Um, uh, before the Zoom people go to their Zoom groups, I just want to explain a couple things. But yeah, feel free to gather. Feel free to gather. I want us to look at a final verse here. Exodus 3, 11 to 12 says this. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. I will be with you. It's so, so, so encouraging, so much hope. God would be with Moses. It's all he needs is the presence of God. And so as we pray for each other, we're reminded that God is with us here tonight, uh, North Langley, that the Church community is a sign that God has not left us. Those people that are gathered around you in prayer and on Zoom, in your Zoom group, they are a reminder that God is with you, that his presence is with you. We are the body of Christ. And so as people pray for you, just know God is with you. I want it to be an encouragement to you tonight. He is with you. So we pray in groups. And what we're going to do is just if one of you has a need, if one of you has a prayer for healing, prayer for a need in your life, um, something that you're going through and you and you're willing to be bold, uh, just go ahead and share that with the group. Um, they would love to pray with you. Also, maybe one of you heard something in Exodus 3, and you want to share that, and you want those in your group to pray for you and into that. Go for that. Go for it as well. This is an opportunity to minister to each other. And uh, remember, this is not a counseling session, so not a time for advice advice giving. This is a time for prayer. So somebody will share and then the rest of you pray and make sure that some of you who aren't praying out loud are listening. You're listening to God. You're going, God, what what should I pray for uh, for this person? What, what's a word that you want me to share with them? And so let's make sure we're listening to God, praying for each other. And uh, Zoom, you can go into your uh, breakout groups. And friends, let's, uh, let's really uh, dive into caring for one another through prayer here tonight. All right, let's pray.
give light you are love and you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore love endures forever and a word that uh, has uh, just today as our staff team was gathering and having some chats the word hope kept coming up hope hope that in a time of real hopelessness that we are a people of hope and we're a people of hope because God is great and he's mighty and he is the God in Exodus 3 who came down he heard our suffering he heard our cries and he has come to us and we his hands and feet get to be filled with hope hope. So let's end with these words tonight. For all of you on Zoom, all of you here, thank you for being here. Let's, let's end with this. Romans 
chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.